Hello and welcome to this next uh, series of videos on reinforcement learning. And in this series, I'm going to be focusing on Q learning. And without any further ado, let's jump into a very simple example that can hopefully provide us with the intuition we need for the more difficult things. So say now we have a little game called Grid World. And here we have a player. We can call this player an agent. This agent is in a cell or a block. And the goal is for this agent to traverse the grid world and to maximize the rewards. So as you can see here in the bottom right, there's a plus 10 reward, which is obviously the, the goal. And every time the agent takes a step into another block in this specific game, the agent gets a minus one reward. So it's a kind of a penalty. So this is the game. The game is that the agent needs to learn the best route to get to this plus 10, the best trajectory. So um, the agent could um, go right, could go right, could go down, left, left, down, right, right, and then finally get to the trajectory, to, to the reward, the plus 10, or the agent could go right, down, left, up, right, and just go in a circle. There's, there's um, a large number of possibilities that the agent could be taking, but the agent doesn't know what is the best route. And this is the essence of reinforcement learning is an agent in a specific state, consider this block to be a state, the agent then needs to determine what is the best action to take in that state. So, right, so we've got the, the word, we've got the word state. And in that state, what is the best action to take? And um, over here, in this simple game, we've got four actions. We've got right, up, left, and down. And then after the agent takes a uh, a step or makes it takes an action, the agent is now in a new state. And now what is the best action to take? Is it down? Is it right? Is it left? Say now it goes down. Now the agent is in this state. What is now the best action to take? Is it up? Is it left? Is it down? Is it right? So this is the idea behind reinforcement learning is, is an agent needs to make sequential decisions so as to maximize its reward. Okay, we'll come back to this and we'll do a nice worked out by hand example of Q learning in the next few videos. But essentially, um, reinforcement learning, let me just bring this up a bit. Reinforcement learning is a machine learning method where an agent learns to make sequential decisions, right? The agent is in a state, the agent makes a decision. The agent is then in a new state, has to make a new decision, in a new state, new decision. And it makes these decisions by interacting with an environment. So in this, in our case, then this was the environment. The agent is in a specific environment. This environment is made up of all these different states. And as the um, agent interacts with the environment, it receives, right, the agent takes actions. And then every time it takes an action, it receives feedback in the form of rewards or penalties. And as it does this, right, as it interacts with the environment, over time, it eventually learns what is the optimal route from this point over here to this prize over here, so that it minimizes the losses and maximizes the reward, okay? And once it has learned what the best action is to take in every state, 
then it has learned what is called the optimal policy. Okay, this is what we get here. The aim, the ultimate aim of reinforcement learning is to learn an optimal policy that guides the decision making to maximize cumulative expected rewards. Okay, so let's Let's jump again into all these different terminologies that we have, uh, we've just heard. What is the agent? The agent is the decision maker. Ultimately, this is the algorithm that learns to make the optimal decisions to achieve maximum reward. Right? And I've said this a few times. It's good to repeat. The agent is in a certain state. And the question is, what is the best action to take in that state to maximize long-term rewards, right? You're in a state. What is the best action to take, right? Then you get a reward. Now you, so now you're in a new state. What is the, and you just, this keeps going back and for, uh, just, it's a sequential um, process. State, action, reward. Now I'm in a new state. What's the best action? I get a reward. What's the, now I'm in a new state. And we keep doing this until the game or the time period has terminated. Okay. All right. So what is the environment? Okay. Anyway, the agent has to learn, like I said before, an optimal policy. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So what is the environment? This is what the agent interacts with to take actions and receive rewards. In a sense, the environment gives, it gives this agent its state and reward. Let's go back up here, right? Here's the agent. The agent is in the environment. The environment gives the agent its state. And it gives the agent its reward. Okay. All right. What is the state? The state describes the current situation of the agent. Okay. So in our simple example, we just had a block. This is the grid world, right? And the, and the state in the grid world is just simply the position. You were in block one or you are in row zero comma zero, right? But in more complicated scenarios, for example, a self-driving car, the state of the, of the car might be its position, its velocity, its sensor reading. So what is the state? It describes the current situation or configuration of the agent. So for self-driving car, what is the current position of the car? the velocity of the car, the sensor readings, right? It could have a camera that is looking in front and to the side, and it perceives um, a little boy running around. It perceives a stop sign. It perceives something. This is the state of the car. What about a medical patient? What would be the state of a, a medical patient? Well, we could measure that person's blood pressure, that person's age, whether they are a male or female, what medication they've been on. This is the state of a patient. So just like in that example, the grid world example, where, where you are in a specific state and you took some action and you ended up in a new state, took some action and ended up in a new state, the medical patient, you could be measuring that patient's blood pressure. Always bring it back to this idea of the grid world. The patient could be in a specific state, blood pressure, right, age, medication. And then by taking a specific action, that um, medical patient could be brought into a new state. Perhaps the blood pressure has lowered. Perhaps the, um, the medication has lowered. Maybe the medication has increased, right? Um, 
this is a way to describe the patient. That's what the state is. And ultimately, we may, in the, in the medical field, we may say, um, remember in the grid world, you had to take a step, step, step until you got to this plus 10 reward. And then, in a sense, the game ended and we started again. And then the game ended. It terminated. Well, what we could say in the medical field is we, we, are, we want to give the patient one year, say, and the patient is in a specific state in the beginning. The patient takes a specific action, right, an action. Maybe the patient is in a new state, takes a new action, is in a new state. And the, the goal will be to maximize, remember, guys, maximize some long-term reward. So we say we want to measure over a period of a year how this patient, maybe some specific um, health condition, has improved uh, significantly over that period. By doing what? By measuring that um, patient's state. The patient then takes an action, the state changes, takes a new action, the state changes, and then ultimately we have the patient in a good state at the end of the year. What about a, a, a university student? Well, the state of that university student could be, for example, um, how many classes have you attended at this point in the semester? What are your test marks, your test grades so far? What courses have you taken? Right? Remember, a state describes the current situation of the agent. It describes a current situation of the student. So in a similar way, we could say that um, we could measure an entire semester, right? And we could say the student begins in a certain state. Number of classes attended, test grades, courses, all kinds of things um, that measure the current configuration or condition of the student. Then the student has a, an option to take different actions, right? By the way, I meant to say that here as well, is that the, the medical patient could take multiple actions, be brought into a new state, take... Uh, choose multiple actions, be brought into a new state. And the whole idea is that you want to you want to find in this specific state what is the best action to take to bring me into another state where I take the best action, new state, best action to maximize long-term rewards. Okay, so it's the same with the student, right? Say so, say the first week of class the student has a certain state. What is the best thing for that student to do? The student could take a number of actions and be brought into, say, different states. Which action is the best in that state to be brought into a new state? And then you've got, again, multiple actions. And the goal is to maximize long-term rewards, which is whatever your your goal is. It could just be to get the student to pass the course or to get 80%, right? Okay, I hope, I hope it's making sense. Now, let's talk a bit about the action. And I think I've spoken quite a bit about it, actually. In this simple grid world example, an action is simply right, up, left, down. Those are the actions you could, you could potentially take. And the whole goal of, the, of, of reinforcement learning is what is the best action? Okay, so in the grid world, uh, I've just mentioned it, but say in the self-driving car world, the action for the car could be accelerate or brake or turn left, turn right. I'm in a specific state, right? What is the best action to take right now? I see a little girl running in front. What is the best action to take? I see a stop sign. What is the best action? I'm in a state. What is the best action? Or the student could be, um, right, I'm in a specific state. Maybe I failed the, mid, the midterm uh, exam, the midterm test. 
So that is a, uh, the, the student is in a specific state, right? Uh, what is the best action to take? Should I go and consult more with the with the lecturer? Should I focus on specific topics? Should I attend more class? Should I attend supplementary sessions? What is the best action to take, if you understand? Okay. What is the reward? This is just simply what the environment gives to the agent after the agent takes an action. So the in this, in our case, you're, you're in a specific state, and every time you take an action, you get a minus one reward, except for this terminal state. You take an action, you get a minus one reward. You take an action, you get a minus one reward, right? But say now you're a student, and you go and consult, you take an action. Um, it's, it's quite difficult, actually, in many real-life examples to... Um, to get immediate rewards. That's why in real life examples, we often have sparse rewards, right? So we don't immediately get feedback, but we might get feedback in three weeks time when we write the test. We might only get feedback um, when after the exam. So this is what makes real world problems quite challenging. So what is the goal of reinforcement learning? It's to learn a policy. This is ultimately what the agent learns. And what is a policy? I want you to think A given S. Given a state, what is the best action to take? Given a state, what is the best action? So the policy is something that maps the states to the actions. Okay, all right, so in the next video, we're actually going to use this grid world example, um, and we are going to introduce something called a Q table, and we are actually going to do a number of handwritten examples so that you understand this idea of how the agent learns which is the best action to take in a specific state. Okay, so that'll be the next one. And um, maybe in two or three videos time, we're actually gonna go into Python and we're going to code an agent class and an environment class in Python. And we're gonna see how to solve this um, by code from scratch. Okay, hope you, this helps. I'll see you in the next video.